You sick of Cold War or Cyberpunk yet? Well, no worries, because we've got you covered. Okay, we don't, but we're talking the games that will. Hello, everybody. I'm Chris Puckett, broadcasting out of the one and only Times Square, New York City, and Reuters Studio, with the power of Turtle Beach and Rocket backing us up again tonight. As you know, with the new year comes new games. And that's right, we prepared another special list for you. This time, without any bad eggs, just the good ones. All scrambled up, <clears throat> developed to perfection. And here they are, our very own top 10 most anticipated games of 2021. Coming in at number 10 is Gotham Knights. In this game, you play as one of Batman's allies years after his death. Gotham has fallen into the wrong hands and you are faced with making or breaking alliances along the way with a bunch of other moral choices. To be honest though, I'm just pumped to be playing as the Riddler walking around and annoying Catwoman with stupid questions. Number 9 goes to Outriders. This third person shooter RPG allows you to customize everything. And when I say everything, I'm talking about your character, four separate classes, weapons, skills, skins, and your dog. No, seriously, Fido is getting a makeover next month. And number eight on our list is Monster Hunter Rise. Staying true to the franchise, this game allows you to play as a hunter and hunt. You guessed it, monsters. The world will be completely seamless and you'll explore new environments with different types of beasts to take on. The game is set to release on March 26, and all I can say is congrats, Switch owners. You can finally play something other than Animal Crossing. At number seven is Blood Bowl 3. If you took American football and the Warhammer universe and combined the two, you get Blood Bowl 3. Instead of football players though, it's monsters and things get a little extra physical. We're talking about dismemberment and decapitations. Yeah, it's pretty gruesome stuff. Moving on, at number six is a game that comes out this week, Sand of Time, the remake. Sand of Time is regarded as one of the greatest action games of all time that no one played. The original game launched 17 years ago and received critical praise for everything from combat to level design to unique mechanics and the ability to rewind time to perfect your combos. All I can say is, where was this feature when I was learning tech in all those years back? Coming in at number five is Resident Evil Village. The long awaited sequel to Resident Evil 7 will continue the storyline where 7 left off and introduce us to new characters and mechanics, putting us back into that world. The question is, do I wanna be put back into that world? Hell no I don't, that game was terrifying. When grandma came through the window, I lost my shit and my headset. Hitting number four on our most anticipated games of 2021 list is Far Cry 6. In this Far Cry, you play as a guerrilla fighter on a fictional island in the Caribbean trying to topple a dictatorship. This will be the largest Far Cry game yet, and the developers even said if you tried to walk from one side of the island to the other, it would take over an hour. Wow. Upon hearing this news, Skyrim gamers replied with, an hour? Try 300 years. Number three on our list is Hitman 3. In case you are wondering, Hitman 2 was number two on our list last year. And the games, well, they keep getting worse the further they go into the franchise, just like the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Take that, Johnny Depp. On a serious note, though, Hitman 3 will conclude the current trilogy and feature the same open-ended assassination gameplay that we all love. The only difference is the third title will bring more maps, costumes, routes, and content. And most importantly, the developer said the story is going to be even more mature and dark this time around. All right, coming in at number two is Deathloop. This FPS version of Groundhog's Day has you play as an assassin caught in a time loop where you make multiple attempts to take out a target. And get this, it gets even better with the multiplayer mode where another player plays as a rival assassin trying to keep that time loop intact by killing the first player. Yeah, it turns out before the game was renamed Deathloop, it was called Tenet. And the number one most anticipated game of 2021 goes to... Halo Infinite! Why? Because Cyberpunk already released last year, and who doesn't want to play free-to-play multiplayer? I'm all in. Are you? Thanks, Turtle Beach and Rocket, for sponsoring the show tonight. Our guest is a running back for the Indianapolis Colts, a man who can run a 4.38 40-yard dash, which is faster than the speed of sound. Yeah, don't quote me on that one, but please give a warm welcome to Naheem Hines. Turtle 
Agent Rocket for sponsoring tonight's interview. And Naheem, welcome to the show. I'm so pumped to have you. Hey, guys, thanks for having me on. Um, I'm excited to do this. And this is a great night on the way. Now, as an avid NFL fan, I have to say I've seen a ton of touchdown celebrations, but none quite like this. The commentator called it a <laughs> cartwheel, but what's the technical term for what we just watched? Uh, the technical term is a round off fool. Uh, people in the cheer world would know uh, it's really hard to fl- hard flip to do with pads on, so uh, really excited I got to do it, and maybe some more fools are coming, but uh, I don't think anytime soon. You crushed it, man. Now, I know a lot of players aren't <laughs> allowed to ski. Brandon McManus was telling us he's not allowed to go snowboarding or bungee jumping or basically anything fun that could cause a risk of, to your injury. So did you catch any flack from your coaches for these acrobatics? Uh, so they didn't say much about it. I flipped in practice before, but uh, I don't flip often. So uh, it's kind of one of those unset rules where you do something and it's kind of like the teacher kind of in charge. Like they know you shouldn't do it. So uh, not much was said, but uh, – I know I'm not supposed to do it, and I'm not going to keep doing it. So maybe once every blue moon, but uh, excited to do it and show off the skills, but I can't do that all the time. All right, all right. Well, flips are great and all, <laughs> but I'm all about these spin moves. Let's take a look at these. Dude, you make it look as easy as pressing the B button on Madden. So how long have you been busting these 360s? Uh, since high school. Uh, it was the offense I ran. Cutting back, uh, you could cut back, but it was harder. It was way harder to, you know, tackle a person cutting back spinning. You can get farther across left and right and uh it's hard to hit especially when you're a fast moving target like me so uh something i learned probably in high school and uh just been getting better and better as the years have been going on was that all natural or is that coming from your coach oh no it's just instinct uh just go out there see and react there's not much i telegraph or think about before i do it i just go out there and uh, if there's a right angle to spin i just throw it and see what happens Well, it's fun to watch, and we've seen a lot of interesting cleats on the field this year, but this is the first time I've seen some with fur. Where did these come from, and why are they called bumbles? Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they're called bumbles, but uh, the exact uh, name of the cleat, you know, I just call it the Indominal Snowman cleats. Uh, I'm a big fan of Rudolph. The only uh, Christmas story I think I may like more than Rudolph is the Grinch, but uh, two different types of tails, and... uh, the Indomitable Snowman, it was just awesome. Uh, my guy Rodney Jackson from uh, Maryland, he did it. So uh, it was pretty cool and uh, pretty cool to, you know, display some talent uh, out on that field with Rodney's talent, obviously, and just going out there wearing his art. I love that. And also, shout out to Kamara. His red and green cleats scored six touchdowns. <laughs> Maybe consider those in 2021. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that, that's, that's just good karma and good vibes. So uh, maybe it's something to look into and think about, too. I love it, man. Well, we've had a number of NFL guests on the show so far that were also into fashion, but you have your own line of shirts. Tell us a little bit about Nightmare Naheem and the clothing behind your name. Uh, Nightmare Naheem, it's just, uh, you know, my licensed shirt is uh, by Breaking Tea. Uh, pretty cool to work with them. They got, uh, they got a lot of things set up really quick. So uh, Nightmare Naheem is just a nickname that I got in high school, uh, Joe Gigolo. He used to always call me. He called me that in high school. And uh, then even when I got to college, it was Naheem is a nightmare on Hillsborough Street. And, uh, you know, nightmare is pretty cool. You know, I think I'm a nightmare out there on the field. I think I'm a nightmare to, nightmare to game plan for. And I think uh, when the ball gets in my hands, it's a nightmare. So uh, I think nightmare Naheem is a pretty cool name and a brand to go by. I love that. So you get nightmare and Joe gets gigolo. That's a pretty good trade. Right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shout out to Joe back home, too. Uh, well, I mean, those T-shirts look awesomely comfy. So do the hoodies. And you clean up pretty well as well. So we got to talk about your fashion sense. Who is the best dressed on the Colts today? Ooh, who's the best dressed? Uh, I always like uh, what Kenny Moore, uh, Kenny Moore and T.Y. Hilton wear. Those And Anthony Walker. Those are probably the three best guys that I always see. Uh, they always wear their uh, fashion with great style and great confidence. And, uh, you know, I think I have some great style too, but uh, – you know, we've got some great guys there, some great guys with some great fashion on the court, so it's pretty cool. The veterans got it down just one step ahead of you. Well, it sounds yep, like you're bit. the third best dressed on the Colts, but according to this year's Madden stats, you're the second fastest behind Paris Campbell. So we got to talk about this. If we held a race in this studio today, a foot race, who's winning <laughs> and who's doing the cartwheels at the finish line? <laughs> I have no idea. I know Paris is fast. I know I'm fast. And uh, Paris is going to get healthy. And, you know, I've been showing some speed this year, breaking some big plays off. Can't wait for Paris to do that, too. Uh, maybe we'll get a race going, but uh, I have no idea. I know we're both four three guys. I know we're both, uh, you know, really, really fast. So I, that's a cool race to see. You guys are absolute studs. But real talk, it's been surreal to see you and your character in-game. What has it been like being able to play as yourself in Madden? 
<laughs> so uh, the funny thing is I don't play Madden often. You know, you know, with the season and stuff and all the football, it's like, you know, you go home and you see work. So uh, I actually have the pleasure of seeing a lot of fans and uh, friends play with me on Madden. And uh, people tag me on Instagram and on social media. And my friends show, show me clips of Snapchat on Snapchat. And uh, it's remarkable. My spin moves pretty fast. Uh, I like to get faster. Hopefully I've been breaking some big plays so I get some more speed. But uh, I look like a, a nightmare on Madden, too. I've seen a lot of clips of people running for two or 300 yards with me. So, uh Pretty cool, but maybe, you know, this offseason I'll get to it and see if I can play with myself, but probably not. 93 speed ain't bad. I'll take that any day <laughs> of the week. Well, outside of Madden, let's talk about some of your favorite games. What have you been playing? Uh, the only game I really play is Apex Legends. I play Fortnite a lot, and uh, I always sprinkle in Call of Duty, but uh been a big, fran- big fan of uh, Apex. Been started playing Apex probably about a year or two ago with a good friend, Dylan Peoples. He runs track on LSU, and that's okay. really all I do in my spare time, so. Really going to go out here and try to see if I can play good tonight. You and Dylan, I love that. Well, w- when you're playing Apex, what's your favorite way to play? Are you fast and furious? Are you a tactical guy? What's your play style? Oh, uh, we push. <laughs> we, we, we're we not going to sit here. Uh, we'll try to win sometimes, but uh, we're, we're going for kill games. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, kill some people, kill some squads. We're not going to play nervous. Uh, we will play to win, but we're not going to. De- we're definitely not playing scared. I'll tell you that. I love that. Well, we got some community questions for you tonight. This first one is going to be coming in from Quagmire241. Shout out to you, Quagmire, for following the Gamer Hour on Twitter. What was it like making the leap from NC State? I think this kid's from North Carolina moving on to the Colts. Uh, The biggest leap was really just uh, leaving my family. Uh, You know, I went to Garner High School, local Garner High School. Then went to NC State. So uh, family was always 20, 30 minutes away. Then uh, going to the NFL, I feel like I had those college struggles that you would have uh, from high school to college. I just had them high, uh, college going to the NFL. So that was probably the biggest jump. Uh, the game was a little bit harder. Ball security was, uh, you know, had to protect the ball more. And really, other than that, those are the biggest jumps. Really, I think the biggest jump was my personal life and just how I handled not being around my family. And then, you know, the things on the field, you just go out there, work hard. And I think those things take care of themselves. We had Big Six who wants to know, I'd love to attend your football camp. When is the next one? Uh, not, not exactly sure on the next dates with the uh, camp, but I do know it'll probably be sometime, uh, in June or July, 2021, depending on how, you know, the whole world pandemic and the COVID situation is going on. We're uh, waiting for to see how things are going. Cause it's hard to plan that, mo- that far ahead. And you don't really know what's going on now. Absolutely. And for me, I don't know enough about this football camp. Tell me, what have you been doing? Uh, just on the campus, you know, getting, it's just a day where, you know, we have coaches from all throughout the areas, uh, Pop Warner coaches and uh, all throughout high school coaches. And I I also have a French from the NFL come back. We just teach fundamentals, technique, and then we go out there. I go out, I race some kids last year. We go out there, have some one-on-ones. We go out there and get competitive. And it's really just a great day just, you know, to get, get some nuggets. You know, hopefully I inspire and motivate one kid out there and can just change their life and reach them. And if we get more than one kid, that's that's great. And that's what we can try to do, just try to show kids that, you know, it doesn't matter where you're from. We, there's kids from Raleigh, North Carolina who can make it. And you just got to follow your dreams and work hard. That's so cool. Who gets a chance to race a man who can run a 4-3? That's ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> this next one comes from Fluffy Pants. If you weren't a running back, what would you be doing today? Uh, if I wasn't a running back, what would I be doing? Hopefully gaming. Hopefully I'd be – hopefully, like, if I wasn't a running back, that means I didn't spend all the time in football. So hopefully I spent all the time I've spent in my life on video games. I think if I spent that time, I think I could be really, really good. So hopefully I'd be a streamer and, uh, like, you know, like Ninja or somebody making money off of uh, what I'm good at. There you go. Demon Hunter 666 has the last community question this week. He wants to know, what's the biggest perk of being an NFL pro in Indianapolis? Are you getting front row seats to the Indy 500? <laughs> uh, yeah, we get to go to the Indy 500. Uh, you know, we, we have connections with the Pacers. Uh, but I think the biggest perk is just, you know, it's, it's the fans in a great city. Uh, the people in Indianapolis are great. You know, everybody there is nice. So I think really just uh, when they figure out you're a cold, and even before that, people just treat you nicely and you know, it's hard to find that sometimes in today's time. Hey, man, you give them all a reason to cheer during a tough year. I give you <laughs> a ton of respect, and I love watching you myself. Now, a few guests are pretty familiar with esports, a few that we've had in the past, but you know exactly which team to follow. So what made you a TSM fan? How did you become a big fan of Team Solo Mid? Apex Legends. Uh, my best friend Dylan and I watched. Uh, my best friend Dave. Th- those, two good, those two good guys in my life, they always just, you know, I watched that TSM Howell and all those guys, and that's what I watch now on YouTube. I go on YouTube and just watch them, watch them do uh, scrims and all that. So a uh, big fan, uh, like their play style, and 
Chiefs are just – I hope I'm half as good as them. Well, today is your lucky day, Naheem, because you and me <laughs> are dropping in with Imperial Howl and Apex Legends. Are you ready? <laughs> are you serious? No, I'm totally oh. messing with you. But we do have oh. a third. We drove in our <laughs> IT engineer's 16-year-old son from Jersey. Don't worry. Jack is our ringer tonight. Are you ready to get carried by Gold Thunder 56? Please carry me. I'll hold my own. I promise. <laughs> I love it. I'll get you the TSM boys in the future, but I'm ready to play with Jack. Naheem, let's get our turtle beaches on and get ready to start spinning those thumbs. It's game time. Turtle Beach and Rocket, thanks for sponsoring tonight's gameplay. Now, Naheem, before we jump in, we have a little challenge from our sponsor. Any guess what the challenge could be? Ooh, no idea. No idea at all. No worries, because I got you covered here. <laughs> no our idea. official challenge from Turtle Beach and Rocket tonight is to place top three in a game of Apex Legends. It's totally doable, right? Definitely doable. We got to play smart and uh, just hit our shots when they count. All right, well, if we win, it's a double down. Not only is Turtle Beach going to be releasing promo codes for 10% off all their products on the site, but also our buddy Jack is going to get a free skin from his dad. A $13 bonus here if we get him the win. So we got to try our hardest. Let's do it. I'm all excited. right, let's, let's get go, it. Jack. Let's go, Gold Thunder. Oh, we got all kinds of friends dancing. At least where, one where other squad guys, coming in with us. No gun yet, but we did find a blue shield. Feeling good. Sniper rifle. Uh oh. Ooh. Ooh, That's no, that big pistol, right? <laughs> no, no wingman. Dude, I don't have a body shield. I have everything but a body. Your decoy is freaking me out. <laughs> Sonar detected. No, they're coming. They're coming though. They're about to come up in a second. They, they're, they're on the floor. I'm, I can know. They know where I'm. They know where I'm top. <laughs> Let's kill him. I want to kill him first. Dude, what? Find him. Find a bot. Yep, he's running. Yeah. One went right, guys. Oh, shoot, I'm in this. Oh, I can't Ooh, get out I'm of there. Right Dude, oh my god, he's throwing me up. Is that, another is that another team? Or is it the same one? I oh, can't hear anyone. Oh, inside. I'm he's top, lit. I'm top. I'm Hey, we get, if we have to, we gotta shoot that thing, guys. Oh, and I don't have my gun out. Airstrike? That doesn't sound nice. I'm reloading, he's right in front of me, though. Why are you taking so long? Oh, he took so long to reload. Oh, my lord. There's a million people down. I feel like there's a million people down in here. I'm about to say. I was there's another, say. One, I another one bottom floor. Careful, Jack. Oh, I got you. Why Second you floor. So Second floor is lit, Jack. He's white. He's upstairs window. Yeah, right in there. I got no ammo and nothing left. Oh, man. That's my teammate That's I'm shooting. Love that. Hey, so he's getting so he's getting somebody up. Where's somebody sub around? I got you, friend. Now they're gonna push us, I think. Probably. They should. He's right here. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh that's horrible. Get a get a swap off if you can. What? Oh, the game, the game is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Store all your ammo. Take that. Alright, uh, here's a bunch of Evil shields here. Level one. 
Okay. You good? I have a mask, dude. I'm, we're gonna see how this goes. All right, come on. Right underneath, yep. Ah, uh, fail. Oh, He's weak, though. Nice. Where's he at? On top? On the ground. They're coming. Yeah. Thank you, Gold Thunder. F1. Thank you. I love celebrating with my best friends. I'm not hitting him. Where they at, Gold? On the ground with you? Right here, on the ground. And behind me. I'm done. Unfortunate. The last one out. Behind you, you behind you. Directly behind you. Oh, that's multiple squads. Oh, let me get out of here. Look at you. Oh, Look at the moves. Bro, come on, man. Nine, nine is so elusive. <laughs> All right, nerd over here. One above you. We're gonna get one person out. On your feet, darling. Okay. Get my guys up first. Two, two more fighting up here. Oh, my front door is wrong. I couldn't even hear. I couldn't hear him coming, bro. It's on me. I couldn't hear him coming. I don't know why. Six squads. Three more. Three more. Okay, good ping. What do you want to do? I hear, I hear explosions behind us to the right as well. Oh, prowler, of course. Ejector seat, love it. Uh, wait, is anybody else on the prowler? No. I'm getting shot, guys, straight ahead. From where? Straight ahead. Where is he? We still there. Oh yeah, we gotta run around. Run, run around through. There's people behind us. We can kill them. Be two on two. Or we can third party these people. I mean, oh. third party. Right on cue. Top left. I see two of them. Should I shoot them or no? Oh shoot. Y'all ready? Yeah, yeah, I feel ready over there. Somebody about to go down. That bloodhound is moving so fast. Shots and them, big shots. Let's go! Yeah. Top three success, but now we're winning this. We got it, we got it, go. I got y'all. Hold on. Oh, that ring hurts that a lot. Bit. You guys are good, don't worry about me. Go for the dub here. Naeem's getting chased. Naeem, you got this. Uh, I'll ping them. Yeah, I'm done. Uh, they're still at the entryway. One, one's chasing now. Two chasing. Oh, I can't. Good try, good try. Uh... Well, Naheem, we pulled it off, buddy. Last time we played Apex on the show, like I said, we made Grayson want to quit, but I think he'd be proud of our performance tonight. Clearly, all we needed was Pathfinder and a partner who could do backflips. <laughs> Mr. Hines, thank you for helping us lock in that top three. Oh, no, thank you, guys. Uh, great night, great night. It was a good time, and because we successfully completed the challenge, we must now give the gamers what they've all been waiting for, the promo codes. The promo code this week is, you guessed it, 
Naheem Hines. Unlock 10% off between now and Sunday, January 24th on all of your Turtle Beach and Rocket gear on checkout, guys. Naheem, I can't believe we actually did it. And it took us to the final <laughs> game, but we pulled it off when the pressure was on. How you feeling right now? I feel like pressure, make, pressure makes diamonds, and we made some diamonds, so happy, Absolutely. happy to do that. I think the aim was a little bit off, but I definitely got to play a little bit better, too. <laughs> you know, we, we're playing with bonus stuff in our ears. We took it to the next level, and we got the win today, and we're going to be celebrating. Thank you, Turtle Beach and Rocket, as always, for sponsoring the gameplay. But, Naheem, it's now time in the show for Review and Rating. Naeem, it's time to review Apex Legends as if we were professional game reviewers who knew what we were talking about. But uh, since I already know everything about the game and I was solely responsible for the Mirage buff, I'll let you go first. What are your thoughts on the game? I want to know what you absolutely love, what you can't stand, or the stuff you really don't care about. Uh, I mean, I thought uh, I thought the game as a whole was fun. Love the game, love playing with you guys. Uh, we got top three. I wish I would have played better, but uh, obviously the game I think is great. They added extra map, and uh, there's not much I can complain about. I feel like uh, they did, the game does a great job, and the game community does a great job of talking about the problems in the game, and that's what makes the game great. EA's always changing it, but now here's the hard part. I need you to score it on a 1 to 100 scale. Where are you placing this bad boy? Uh, I'm biased, so I'll give it, I'll give it a 90, 95. I can't give it 100 because I don't believe anything was made perfect. And uh, that's, a, that's why video games are video games, because they're not made 100%. Uh, and that's what makes video games also great. You know, EA listens to us. They listen to what we like and what we don't like. So I'll give it like a 9. I'll give it a 95. 95. That's like an A plus. Good stuff there. Yeah, I love I mean, it. For love me, it. the game, it's lightning fast. The movement is so fluid if you know how to do it properly. But I feel like I get lost in trying to pick up all the equipment. I wish I knew which yep. ones go on certain guns other than just having to play thousands of hours. But not to mention, I mean, the game's got a new season and it brings in a new character with new abilities that constantly changes the meta. Personally, I don't love change, but I do love the classic Titanfall gameplay, and that's basically what we were playing, Titanfall BR, with weird <laughs> abilities. So on a scale of Caustic to Lifeline, I got to give the game a Pathfinder. It's pretty good. It covers a lot of ground, but at the end of the day, I mean, it can be pretty solidly annoying. Naeem, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. It was an absolute blast, and next time we're going to get Imperial Howl, get sniped out, one of the TSM boys to carry us all the way to that number one spot. Sound good? Sounds great. Thank you guys for having me, and uh, hopefully we'll get to do it again. You're the man, sir. Thank you for coming on the show, and I hope you get to enjoy some time in the off season with the family. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So uh, just excited uh, just to be on here, guys, and hope you guys enjoy that time with your family as well. It's not going to be the last one. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, give it up for Naheem Hines. <laughs> <laughs> Naeem Hines is spinning and cartwheeling the touchdowns both on the field and in games. You can catch Naeem on his socials. His Twitter and Instagram are both at the 997 because the 996 was taken, clearly. And it's that time of the show for me to go home and play Resident Evil 7. Yeah, so by the time Resident Evil Village comes out, I'll still be scared shitless, but at least I'll know where the bobby pins and keys are so I can get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> We're on every platform owned by a billionaire. Yeah, that's right. YouTube, Twitch, and now Amazon Prime. If you don't have an Amazon Prime account, then get one. If your parents won't pay for it, borrow your friend's account. And if that doesn't work, then check out the other 50 plus streaming channels we don't have time to mention. Don't be afraid to use the hashtag on our next social post using our handles from Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and go to our website, thegamerhour.com, to see who's coming on the show next. From Reuters Studio in Times Square, New York City, I'm Chris Puckett. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now practice your spin moves, and we'll catch you on next week's episode for another show of The Gamer Hour.